Mi abuela. My name is Bobby Sanchez. I'm from New Rochelle, New York. My cousin was always interested in production, like my older cousin. So he would show me stuff when I was a teenager. He liked hip hop and I always loved hip hop. So I wanted to learn how to like make beats, write music, you know, learn how to work a studio and record. I guess my first hip hop album was one that my cousin gave me titled The Carnival by Wyclef John, who was in the Fugees. And it was like his first solo album. And it was really weird hip hop stuff. Like he used a lot of sampling and like dialogue interludes that had like funny stuff in it. That's what really got me interested. Then he gave me Black Eyed Peas first album before they had Fergie. It was called Behind the Front. So I'd say like when I was 11 or 12, he gave me those two CDs. I just listened to them over and over and I got these beats in my head. But originally I started writing poetry like in when I was like seven or eight. Lo quiere decir un poco. Por esto, este presidente es un mentiroso. Yeah, I think albums are fading, slowly fading. Some good advice I got once from Phil Maffa is like, you could drop an album of 15 songs, right? And then, but two months later, after three months later, after the album drop, what do you have that's new? People are always looking for new things, you know? Instead of releasing all those 15 songs at once, you know, you could release for 15 weeks straight a song every week. And then people are more like they're a little more interested because they see you're coming out with new material every week you know I, th I think albums are still relevant but not as much there's artists that are coming out with albums that are not just one genre you know because i think that's what people are digging right now so i think that's how they can keep the album alive like try to make every song sound different beyonce's last album she came out with she had like four or five different genres on the album and like a lot of people were really attracted to it because like she's not just messing with r b now you know she's like evolving controlling but the floor is still flowing and period is still exploring to neoliberalism why is the system well i think it's good because more people have access to microphones you know you can go out and buy like a 50 dollar usb mic and record a whole album you know it used to be such an exclusive thing to like book studio time and like hire engineer producer and things but like you don't really need any of that now so i think it's better for the music industry because more people have access to it and therefore more music is produced which i think just makes a better world like more music you know there's a lot of music out there so people aren't always going to listen to your stuff but like i think it's it's cool that like 12 year old kid at home could just like record his own album and not have to like really rely on anyone else you know so i think it's good it's just it's a changing industry and it's like so recent too like like 50 years ago, you could not like buy your own interface and mic and record. Depends how hard you work too, you know? Like if you're really doing a lot of networking and like reaching out to record companies or blogs online, then like you could be successful, you know? But there is definitely a lot more competition now because of the internet, you know? Like you can go on SoundCloud and find maybe like a million rappers just in the United States. Just for a drug charge, how many lives been wasted? Floating above this conscious impossible to subjectify. It's definitely shrunk the late label industry and independent labels like have just been popping up like crazy over the last 20 years so I don't think labels will be very relevant like in 10 years because everyone can do it themselves you know like granted like there's a lot of things that a label can do for you you know like marketing and all these people that can work for you and stuff but like just in my case you know like I do political hip-hop music it critiques that exploitation like of all these artists you know I, I can't see myself being signed granted if I get an offer for money, I might take it, you know, but like personally, I think like, I don't know if I'd ever be signed to a label because like, let's say they want 50 to 60% of my song. Like, what did you do? Like, I'm self-produced. I mix engineer master myself. So like, only thing you're doing is putting it on a platform, like on a bigger platform. So it's a little sketchy, the record industry. I saw this interview, like when I was in high school, it's Nina Simone, like talking about what her music is she she said that like your art needs to reflect how society is you, it needs to reflect what oppression is happening right now I, that really spoke to me like when i heard that in high school i was like i'm never gonna make a song unless it's political you know you know there's always gonna be people who write love songs you know on the radio you'll never hear a political song on the radio and that's done purposefully you know i feel i have an obligation because my dad's an immigrant you know my grandma's like a native indigenous woman so like they tell me about their stories of their past and like 
I feel like I have to share that. I don't necessarily feel like artists have an obligation to make political music, but like Trump is our president. He's a sexist and a racist, Islamophobic, like all these bad things. If you're making happy-go-lucky songs, like is that reflecting what's happening right now in society? Like that's why I do what I do, because I think there's not enough hip hop, like political hip hop out there. Evolutionary conscious not cemented.